Good morning, good evening, and good day. Dajahao. Welcome to the last and final session of our virtual global cooperation training framework on sustainable materials management solutions to marine debris. Co-organized by the United States, Taiwan, Japan, and the Netherlands. I am Rhiannon Bramer, the Environment, Science, Technology, and Health Officer at the American Institute in Taiwan, and I am pleased to be your moderator today. Today we will be learning from experts from across the world to share their insights and diverse case study examples on how the circular economy or sustainable materials management can be leveraged to address the growing challenge of marine debris. Before we start our event, I want to share some guidelines uh, for this webinar. Please mute your microphones during the opening remarks. This will help us keep communications for everyone clear. Thank you for your cooperation. Our first VIP speaker is Director General Huang Xiangwen from the Taiwan Ocean Affairs Council. Director General Huang has been an advocate for clean water, healthy habitat, and sustainable resources within ocean affairs. Without further ado, let's welcome General Huang to kick off today's webinar. Hello everyone, I'm Julia Huang from Ocean Conservation Administration. On behalf of the Ocean Affairs Council, I sincerely welcome you to join this section of BGCTF, the Sustainability Material Management Solution to Marine Debris. We all know that marine debris is a very serious problem to the oceans. In 2010, it was estimated around 8 million metric tons marine debris went to the oceans. And this increased to 19 to 23 metric tons in 2016. And if we don't take any actions, it will increase to 53 million tons by 2030s. I think that's the reason we today try to find resolutions, how to reduce, recycle, and then reuse marine debris to the oceans. And for today, there are many new technology in Taiwan we applied. So in this section, we would like to share each with you. Firstly, we will welcome Ms. Charles Huang from Circular Taiwan Network to give a keynote speech to have an overview. Secondly, there will be three presentations from three companies to share you the new technology. The first one is from Eva Lutville, the Far Eastern New Century Corporation. The second one will be Mr. Damon Tsai from Plastic Industry Development Center. And the third one is Mr. Cosmos Lu from Super Dragons. And lastly, let's welcome Mr. David Yao in San Diego Port. He will show you the experience in San Diego Port, how to conduct ecotourism and then reduce marine debris to achieve a sustainability oceans. So overall, we hope this section will give you some update and try to cooperate between private sector and the government to find the best resolution. And together, we can achieve the zero plastic oceans in the coming future. Thank you for your participation, and also let's welcome the following presentation. Thank you, Director General Wang. Now we are honored to have our next VIP speaker, Charles Wang, founder of the Circular Taiwan Network, Taiwan's circular economy pioneer to deliver the keynote speech. Charles is dedicated to promote Taiwan's economic transition towards circular economy, an economic model that decouples economic growth from resource depletion and environmental impacts. Charles also champions circular agriculture by advocating a clean and safe environment by producing fertilizers and bioenergy from local waste. Without further ado, let's welcome Founder Huang. Hello everyone, good morning and good evening to all of you. My name is Charles Huang and I'm the founder of Circular Taiwan Network and we are a nonprofit organization whose mission is to promote the development of circular economy in Taiwan. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the United States, Japan, and the Netherlands for joining Taiwan 
in co-hosting this very important training event. And of course, I'm deeply honored to be invited to share with you how Taiwan is actively planning and applying the concept and practices of circular economy to fundamentally mitigate marine debris crisis. Circular economy is a restorative and regenerative economic and industrial system where users' needs are to be redefined, products redesigned, in order to improve resource efficiency whilst eliminating externalities. Needless to say, similar to the crisis we face on climate change, marine debris also meets no national boundaries. And it would require dedicated commitment from all nations to collaborate in order to effectively manage and control the potential devastations. As our good friend, Izumi Hiroyasu-san from Japan put it in his opening remark, the whole world needs to work together. How bad is the state of marine debris? To use an analogy, when you see a bathtub about to overflow with water, what is the first thing you would do to stop the water from spilling over? You ask. Turn off the faucet, of course. Unfortunately, our current or linear economic system makes it rather difficult to reach the faucet. And we, in return, have focused most of our attention in addressing marine debris at the end of the line, after the water, or rather trash, has already entered the tub or the ocean. By incorporating the concept and practices of circular economy, we can redeploy innovative strategies such as service-based business model, 3R, including reduce, reuse, and recycle friendly product designs, or efficient separation and collection infrastructures to prevent marine debris, such as ghost fishnets, from entering and polluting our oceans in the first place. Specifically, how do we apply circular economy? Well, service-based business model, or so-called products as a service, is one of the three main strategies or principles of circular economy. It is the idea that businesses can generate profit by reducing waste by offering its customers the use of the performance of a product rather than selling of the product itself. In the case of fishermen, they don't necessarily need to purchase or own fish net. So fish net manufacturers, instead of focusing on selling as many fish nets as possible to fishermen, the company would let the fishermen rent the fish nets and this would avoid leaving the fish nets out in the ocean and cause damage to the marine environment. Furthermore, with service-based model, fishnet manufacturers retain ownerships of fishnets, which would provide incentive for the company to develop and redesign and offer fishnets of superior quality to fishermen and to facilitate ease of reuse and recycle. This would then drastically reduce the company's cost for having to continuously procure new materials for fishnets making. And this obviously would translate to a win-win relationship between the fishnet suppliers and fishermen. Another retail example of a Taiwanese company that offers product as a service is a company called Qingpiao. It's a small company. It offers environmentally friendly utensils that people can rent and a zero waste dining plan service. Imagine being at the beach and being able to rent a proper picnic set to enjoy meals with friends and then return it when you are done. These type of businesses allow us consumers to enjoy all the convenience of plastic without worrying about them ending up as waste in the sea. In addition to encouraging companies to incorporate service-based or product as a service business model, and thus preventing waste to be discharged into our ocean. Circular economy also urges company to engage in 
what we call high value utilization, which is the idea that each product or resources is used to its maximum economic value and minimum to zero impact on the environment. Therefore, in the context of the circular economy, all existing marine debris floating and scattered in the ocean should not be regarded as waste. In fact, these are valuable resources which are simply misplaced. They ought to be collected and separated, extracted and processed for maximum economic value and creating jobs. In short, similar to practices of onshore urban mining, we refer to this value creation process as offshore marine debris mining. For example, Reborn Plus is a company that uses plastic granulation process to turn fishnets into new plastic resin, which is then become a new raw material that could be used to create other products. Another example is Lidon, a company that has not only discovered how to reduce the size of polluted styrofoam by 90%, so they could be easily transported to a treatment center. It can also turn dissolved styrofoam into an impact resistant recycled plastic that could be used in computer keyboards and other products. The third and the last principle or strategy of circular economy is systems collaboration. In most instances, collaboration in a linear economic model is generally much narrow in definition and scope and thus frequently resulted in a relationship or commercial relationship, which is generally fragile and less resilient and not sustainable. On the other hand, collaboration in the circular economy is much broader, more comprehensive and more inclusive. For example, in circular economy, A company's waste is B company's resources. B company's waste can be C companies' resources, so far and so on. As such, zero waste is only attainable if A player, B company, C company, D companies are willing and perhaps even taking the initiative to work together. Together, these companies can collectively create a zero waste community. Therefore, the result from systems collaboration is one that guarantees all parties can win and their relationship will be resilient and sustainable. As these examples have shown, Taiwan has discovered that a circular economy not only has the ability to help us address the challenges of marine debris, but it can also help stimulate new economic growth and creating new jobs in local territories. It is worth noting the three principles of circular economy, products as a service, high value utilization, and systems collaboration are the key roadmaps or developmental guidelines for all countries who are aspire to ascertain the 17 sustainable development goals set up by the United Nations. With Taiwan's solid recycling and waste management capability and depth, combined with fully integrated and aligned supply chains, Taiwan can be an incredible partner in achieving our collective goal of a zero waste ocean. Furthermore, it is our hope that in the years ahead, Taiwan, US, Japan, and Netherlands, we can all together expand GCTF initiatives beyond marine debris to build an all-inclusive forum for partnership in circular economy, focusing on creating innovative circular economic models and to strengthen global resiliency against potential natural disasters. In closing, I'd like to echo AIT Director Brent, his opening remark to strengthen partnership among like-minded nations, to go beyond democratic values, preserving our planet for future generation, conserving natural resources, creating innovative economic models, and new jobs for our children. Thank you for your attention. Good night.
and good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Huang, for your impressive speech. Now we will have presentations from experts from government, industry, and NGOs here to talk about innovative solutions and unique insights to tackling the global marine debris problem. We will have presentations from Taiwan Far Eastern New Century Corporation, Senior Manager Eva Lo, Taiwan Plastics Industry Development Center Team Leader Damon Tsai, U.S. Port of San Diego Legislative Policy Administrator David Yao, and Taiwan Super Dragon Technology Strategic Advisor Cosmos Liu. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I'm Eva Luo. I'm from Far Eastern New Century Corporations. So um, I know that uh, many of you have been working from home uh, for a while since COVID-19. And many of you already know new normal lifestyle better than us in Taiwan, because in Taiwan that is very safe. Most of us still working from home, uh, still working at office. So through this opportunity, I would like to share with you how we work with our colleagues, friends and business partners um, to make the circular economy increase the value of a green miracle. So in our company, we always say that we want to empower in the possibilities. So who we are? We are the global leading integrated polyester producers, especially in the recycling industry. So our company has, uh, you know, started the recycling business since 1988. Yes, you are right. It has been more than 30 years. So we work with uh, the bottle collectors to collect uh, the PET waste bottles and process those post-consumer bottles in our current recycling plants. And through different process, we make uh, the products to be high value added. We all know that the climate changes, the global warming, and also the ocean plastic pollution has drawn a lot of attention. And then we also have some concern that uh, what will be the next? We believe that the lower down the carbon footprint to make the world more sustainable is very important. And then the recycling play a very important part uh, to reduce the CO2 emission. So FENC Top Green Recycling Solutions, we provide the infinity recycling solutions for the industry. So in our company that we produce the, the mechanical recycling and the recent two years, we invest our R&D uh, in the chemical recycling industry as well. So using our top green PCR chips can reduce 51 to 63 carbon footprint CO2 emission. So who are our partners? Uh, our circular economy partners covers textile industry, beverage, and also home and personal care. So we use different sustainable material to provide them different um, solutions in order to make their beautiful products here. Um, this is one of very good uh, example. This is very exciting. Uh, in 2011, uh, there, there was a flower expo. So our group, we donate a buildings, we call it eco art. From this, you may, you may not feel that it's anything different from the other buildings. Well, the most special part is that all of the buildings are made by these recycled bottles. So this, if you go inside the building, you will see millions of bottles made by the recycled material. We, our company also used the recycled polyester to produce the football jersey. So you can see a lot of uh, countries and also the team. And 
very exciting that the, the football jersey can also be made by the recycled polyester. And then we also provide the recycled material for the packaging. So the beverage companies and also the fashion brands and also home care brands, they use our material to, pro to produce more sustainable products. And here is another example in the health, personal care, and also medical industry. It can also use the um, eco-friendly products. Um, here is another example that we, our Japanese recycling facility, we work with the brands and also the retailers. Uh, when the consumer, um, they consume the, their beverage, they just put these glass bottles into the vending machine, uh, the recycled vending machine. And then we, our company collect those bottles back to our factories and reprocess them into the clean uh, material suitable for the food packaging used. And then, they, and then the beverage company just uh, refill and to produce uh, the beverage bottles again. And we know that the ocean um, pollution has drawn a lot of attention. And here is another very good example to share with you. Our achievement in recent two years, especially um, that we work with uh, the brands, we have uh, prevented over 6,000 metric tons of uh, plastics from the ocean. So we convert those waste material uh, to 30 to more than 32 million pairs of the new shoes. So these are the beautiful shoes made by the ocean recycled polyesters. So it's very beautiful, isn't it? Um, each year that uh, we will have a volunteer, uh, you know, activities. We have a, our family. Uh, friends and also colleagues uh, join the uh, beach cleaning uh, activities. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 this year, we cannot make it, but we still try to use different way to protect uh, our earth. So this is uh, my presentation. Uh, so let's leave uh, the better word for our next generation. So if you have any questions, please contact with me. Here is my email address. So thank you. Have a good day. Hi, everyone. It's been a great honor presenting in the GCTF conference. My name is Damon Tsai. I'm now serving in PIDC, Plastic Industry Development Center, as a team leader. PIDC is a professional institution from Taiwan with capability of material R&D, testing and analysis, and also sustainable consulting and talent training. Our mission is to promote plastic industry by advanced technology and to assist enterprises to keep up with the circular economy trend and for better sustainable development. Before the idea of creating the Sustainable Material Library, PIDC has been working on ocean plastics long ago. On the Earth Day of 2018, which is the right time for us to gather industrial partners from up and down streams and then establish the Ocean Plastic Coalition. The goal of this coalition is to promote circular economy by turning ocean plastics into consumer products as the solution to marine debris and we are all volunteers doing so. The coalition has 12 members for now and each of them is essential for many different product supply chains. On the first phase, we have plastic and marine waste recycling companies. The marine waste here is, is specified as fishing nets and oyster shells. And the second phase are the consumer product manufacturers, ranging from textile, electronic devices, glasses, and stationary goods. And lastly, we need a market and sales channel, of course. Some of the manufacturers already have their own branding and markets, 
and we are looking for more opportunity to expand the market for sure. For the past few years, the members have created product made of ocean plastic such as drone string for surfers and sunglasses from waste and nylon fishing nets. Also, the fountain pen from Pep Bottle with the look of black faced spoon bill. It is to raise awareness to protect the endangered species. From these successful practices, we realized how sustainable materials benefit the business while doing something good to the environment. Taking advantage of PIDC's knowledge and connections, we wanted to dedicate our capabilities and turn it into greater benefit to the industry and society. In the year of 2020, supported by small and medium enterprises and administration of Ministry of Economy Affairs and also local industry associations. PNDC is able to working on the establishment of this sustainable material library. The library where you can visually see how materials were used. Also, you can touch and feel it physically. The sustainable material is defined as the material which has least impact to the environment and human health during its product life cycle. The product life cycle is including the process of raw material, the production, the product usage, and the end of life disposal. In the first year, which is 2020, we will collect at least 300 materials in stock and at least 2,000 materials in coming three years. The Sustainable Material Library is scheduled to open on December 9th this year. Besides the physical library, the construction of online database is on the way and will be soon announced. Thank you for your attention. I've left my information on this final slide. Feel free to contact PIDC for further inquiries. Thanks again. Bye. Hello from the Port of San Diego. My name is David Yao and I'm happy to talk with you today about marine debris and environmental stewardship at one of California's major seaports. The Port of San Diego is an independent public agency created by the state of California to be a trustee for public tidelands. The jurisdiction is 34 miles of waterfront around beautiful San Diego Bay, a major tourist destination with 18 hotels, more than 75 restaurants, cargo and cruise terminals, 22 public parks and many visitor serving and recreational uses. As a special district, the Port of San Diego fulfills economic and environmental responsibilities that have been assigned to it by the state of California. One example is addressing the challenge of marine debris. Five years ago in 2015, the Port of San Diego established the Aquaculture and Blue Tech program. The program was established to explore growth opportunities within the blue economy sector and to conduct planning and pre-development work to support and inform sustainable aquaculture and port-related blue tech solutions. To meet environmental challenges with economic opportunity, the Port of San Diego is inviting the participation of, an, of emerging industries such as environmental remediation, ecological engineering and remote monitoring technologies, and any other innovative technology or business model that has the potential to address port challenges and inform future opportunities. Port's Blue Economy Incubator offers a unique value proposition by providing entrepreneurs with key assets and support services focused on pilot project facilities. This includes subject matter expertise, permit-ready infrastructure, entitlement assistance, marine spatial planning tools, market access, and funding. This type of support is critical to early stage companies to help them demonstrate and validate their innovative technology and business models in a real-world port environment. So far, eight pilot projects have been approved for funding including shellfish nursery operations, copper remediation technology, a drive-in boat wash, a smart marina application, seaweed aquaculture, bio-enhancing concrete technology to protect the shoreline, soil remediation in marine environments, and the development and deployment of a marine debris removal vessel that moves around the bay, collecting trash from the surface of the water.
and identifying debris hotspots to keep our beautiful bay looking its best. This is a win-win situation. The port is learning from the pilot projects, which result in addressing existing environmental challenges and informing future long-term opportunities. And for the incubator companies, a successful demonstration of their technology at the port provides them with a strong case study for commercialization and scale-up. Moving forward, the port will continue seeking new innovative aquaculture and blue tech proposals to address port environmental challenges and help us meet our goals for economically and environmentally healthy bay. Think about it. Ports worldwide are at the forefront of the environmental challenges associated with climate change and coastal development. To adapt, ports can leverage the use of innovative technologies and collaborations with business partners and communities to revolutionize how to be environmental stewards and protect coastal ecosystems for generations to come. Check out the work we're doing at portofsandiego.org. Thanks for your interest. Let us know your thoughts and ideas and any questions you have and keep up the good work. Taiwan is a refuse pioneer boasting one of the highest household recycling rates in the world. Nonetheless, it must wrestle with growing piles of electronic waste. Toxic materials inside e-waste can cause severe environmental and health problems. Unless it acts quickly, this Asian tiger could drown in the products of its own success. On Taiwan's northwest coast, an elite team battles to devise a solution. Author Huang, rising star designer and winner of the World Economic Forum's Technology Pioneer Award. Ken Wu, a visionary seeking to transform a traditional industry and let Taiwan shine on a global stage. And Ken's father, Yao Shun Wu, a veteran materials expert with over 40 years of experience. Their mission, construct a state-of-the-art recycling plant to increase precious metals extraction, create new recycling solutions, and be a game changer for the industry worldwide. The highlight is a chain of canopies linking factory and office tower. The canopies will help minimize the carbon footprint with solar panels to provide renewable energy and will also shelter the inner courtyard. The scale-like surfaces and curving installation call to mind the exalted mythical beast. We try to do all that with trash. And they can come up with ideas like, why don't you use my trash? Ken Wu's company processes nearly a thousand tons of waste per year. In the past, e-waste recyclers simply stripped away precious metals and discarded or incinerated the rest, producing toxic gases, polluted water, and piles of useless scrap. Super Dragon recycles scrap into useful items, the company also lowers chemical use through careful sorting of wastewater. They are able to extract over 99% of the precious metals in the e-waste they receive. The challenge is to find a use for the growing piles of plastic that remain. The climate test system end up using e-waste, PC, from DVDs and CDs. SDTI do recycle CDs, so they actually can extract the silver and you left over with PC chips. We are taking optical grade PC and turn that into a triple layer sandwich board, which is translucent at the same time, has to hit all the environmental standards. The MiniWiz team thinks they found the key to the materials puzzle, but Leo worries that it may not stand up to the intense winds at the site. At a lab in central Taiwan, the MiniWiz R&D team watches nervously alongside the lab technicians. A canopy panel has been installed in a steel frame to simulate its future setup. Inside the test chamber, the wind pressure will be increased until the specimen either passes the test or breaks apart. Under the watchful eyes of the technicians, the test begins. Jarvis Leo and his team have put months of hard work and millions of dollars of their clients' money into developing this material. If it fails, they will lose the trust of the Wu's and maybe the entire project. The pressure is on for both designers and the designed. 
The number on the meter reaches the required threshold. The canopy panel, made from recycled plastics, has withstood pressure equal to a strong typhoon and remained intact. The product of the R&D team's hard work has passed the stress test with flying colors. But this does not guarantee it will pass a real-world test or the scrutiny of Chairman Wu's expert eyes. This labor of love for Taiwan's recycling pioneers is paving the way for a future where nothing is wasted. E-waste is a looming problem on a global scale. This team of innovators in Taiwan has started tackling the issue in their own backyard, mining value from our discarded devices. The promise and possibility of a no-waste closed-loop society. Thank you very much for participating in today's event. We sincerely hope our two virtual GCTF workshops will help you better understand how to incorporate innovative solutions for circular economy or sustainable materials management for all waste management, and in particular, how we can all work together to solve the global marine debris issue. I also hope that in the future, you will all be able to have a chance to visit Taiwan and see for yourself what a remarkable place it truly is.